How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and welcome back to another installment of Aren't You Happy? You're not the dumb person trying to sell this rice or shit box. I know it's a long and lengthy title. I'm trying to work on an acronym, but I haven't thought of a good one yet. Anyways, today we're going to be looking at some quote unquote builds, if you would dare call them that. We're going to be looking at some builds and see uh, if they're worth the money that they're asking and, and maybe trying to figure out why they're trying to sell them. So, Let's go ahead and dive right in with the first one. We got a 2013 Honda Civic SI show car. Ooh, Honda Civic show car. I, you know, it ain't the first one I've seen of these. $35,000. It probably is the most expensive one I've seen, or at least the guy's asking the most for this one. Posted 10 days ago, so no one's jumping out of their chair to buy this one. Let's go ahead and take a look and see why. So the first picture, I mean, it does look like a nice little show car. We have a somewhat of a stancy build. Not too much crazy camber, so I'm not hating it too much. It's all one color for the most part besides this see-through hood, which means he better have some goodies underneath that hood. The interior looks nice. Looks like he put some money into it. Uh, he's got a car seat, which is fine. It is a Honda Civic after all. You know, I would like to see some more grocery room back there, but it seems like your harness bar is taking it up a little bit. The wheel setup looks nice. We have a nice green and bronze paint scheme, and it looks pretty sick. I'm not going to lie. I, I can I can respect the colors, but I don't get the, the Louis Vuitton headlight lenses on your Honda Civic. I mean, it just doesn't seem like, you know, the best of both worlds. You got the Honda Civic, but you got the Louis V's. I don't know about that one, Chief. The exterior of the car, like I said, it looks like a show car, but I just can't see this car bringing in $35,000. We have a really impractical trunk. When you go and you open that, and you're trying to throw in your groceries, your, your two cartons of eggs, and your milk, and everything. It's just really impractical. I mean, I would just I would just like a normal trunk. But you know what? You know, Honda Civic people, they got to they gotta show off where they can because underneath the hood, they're lacking. We have a nice carbon hood and some nice carbon fenders, and looks like a wide body kit and everything. And again, it looks like, you know, he put some money and time into it, but I'm, I'm looking underneath the hood right now, and I'm a little bit depressed. I mean, we'll have to see in his description because because this is the best shot he has of it, but if there ain't no big ass turbo or something cool underneath that hood, I don't know. I'm, I'm you know, a strut bar. Who, who gives a shit? Okay, colder intake. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not seeing thirty-five thousand dollars worth of worth of goodies in this car. Now you might have put thirty-five thousand into it, but we all know in the car world, you, just because you put a lot of money into your car doesn't mean you're gonna get it back. So, as a little stancy show car, it's cool. But I think there's a lot better cars you can get for $35,000. Let's, let's go ahead and look at his description. He has an Avery dark green pearl with sparkle laminate wrap. That is nice. He has a lot of carbon fiber all over the car as we saw in the photos. Window vents, which is, I guess, you know, whatever window vents. Interior, he has some Braum front seats with custom honeycomb stitch. Braum harnesses and harness bar honeycomb. He really likes honeycomb. He's got honeycomb and carbon fiber all over this thing. I really want to see engine. Oh, here we go. Engine bay. Perfect. This is where all the goodies are going to be stored. Brand new honeycomb carbon fiber engine pieces. Getting sent to me soon. He doesn't even have them. Was made replica. Wait. What? Oh, okay. A oh, chameleon coated intake and valve cover. Oh, wait. But where's... Where's the performance? I mean, you got your car looking like a full-on race car on the interior. I mean, look at that. We got harness bars, racing seats. Har I mean, look at this. This looks like a race car, right? But you just you just have a painted covers. All right. Well, yeah, $35,000. Good luck with that one, buddy. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next quote-unquote build. Have fun trying to sell that. Next car, we have a 2009 Nissan Maxima S. For $8,000, this, this guy's a little bit more reasonable. And it looks like he has just as many mods as the last guy. Would you have a look at that? So as you can see, his exterior is highly modified. We have some crazy, just high performance hood scoop on the hood. We have some really high tech hood latches. We have a wide body fender kit on it, fender vents, a bunch of sponsors. I mean, this right here, this is a solid build. That Honda Civic can eat my balls after seeing this thing. Look at this thing. This is, oh, look at the rear. We have a, 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 a vent, I guess, on the rear bumper. You know, that helps with cooling of the rear bumper. We also have a Nissan badge on the fuel door, just in case you forgot what you owned when you were filling it up. You're like, well, which one am I in today? The Nissan or the Lamborghini, am I right? The rear end, we have a diffuser, which is really aggressive and really sporty. Surprisingly, we do not have any tow hooks, which is which is really odd because, I mean, seeing that this car is a full-on track car, I would expect a few tow hooks or something like that, maybe a few trophies in front, in front of it, but I guess he's just being a little bit more humble. He's not flexing the trophies like some of these other people. I mean, look at that fitment. That's just A1. Uh, again, better than a Honda for sure. So this guy, I mean, $8,000, I feel like this guy doesn't know what he has. I feel like this is pretty much a steal at that price. Uh, is it on bags too? That thing is slammed, man. Talk about a build. Look at that. This guy really has some good ass taste. We got HKS, Kenwood. You know, when you when you're listing Kenwood, HKS, and Alpine all together like that, it just really goes to show that this guy really knows what he's talking about. Too loud, too bad. <laughs> 
Wow. Yeah. I mean, you know what? When you own a race car, sometimes your neighbors just got to get with the program and understand that, you know, hey, man, I ain't a normal car guy. I'm a, I'm a race car driver, man. Does he have a roof scoop? Oh, my God. That is some perfect cooling for your rear passengers. You know, if you just cut a hole right there, you could put some ducts and just make them blow your passengers right in the face. It's perfect. It's perfect uh, ingenuity right there. The interior is stock. It's a little bit of a sleeper build on the interior. Say you're an Uber driver and the, the exterior looks really intimidating. They come inside and it's really comfortable and it's just a really great Uber. Look at that. looks completely stock. Oh, V6. Whoa. I thought we were looking at a four cylinder, but well, he didn't have to flex on us like that with the V6. It looks like a short ram intake too, maybe a cold air intake. Uh, it looks like it is tucked a little bit away from the engine. So it might, it might be a cold air intake, not a short ram, but either way, I mean, let's talk about a serious performance car right here for $8,000. I think you'd be a dummy not to be considering this as your next build. But then again, it's already built. Hashtag built, not bought. Am I right? All right, next card, 2005 Dodge Neon SRT4. Wow, we got the Dodge Neon SRT4 here, guys. It is still a Neon, so I'm sorry, Neon boys. It's still a Neon. Anyways, he's asking $12,000, which probably isn't that bad of a price, but let's go ahead and take a look and see what he has to offer for that price. We got carbon fiber everywhere on this front end. Might have been in a front end collision, and he just replaced it, but whatever. It's still carbon fiber. Carbon fiber hood, carbon fiber fenders. He has the most aggressive intercooler I've ever seen. Guys, 300,000 likes, and I will do this to my Supra. 300,000 likes. As you can tell, I really do not want to do this to my Supra because it is very, very ugly. Let's go ahead and take a look at what else he's got. The side profile actually doesn't look half bad. It looks like he's got a nice set of wheels. The side profile isn't the worst thing I've ever seen. The rear end, which I'm sure not many people see because this thing's got to be slow as dog shit, but the rear end of it, again, not too bad. He's got some aftermarket taillights, looks like a black trunk, some vortex generators, which probably ain't doing jack, but again, the rear end ain't that bad. The sticker made you look, no, nope, no you didn't. Looks like a stock ass Dodge Neon pretty much from the rear end. Not really anything to, to gawk at, if you know what I mean. I just noticed this side of the car has fender flares. This side does not. So he's got some fitment issues for sure. He's 100% has something fucked up underneath that, that, that chassis. So I would get that looked at by a professional. I want to see his interior and underneath the hood. I'm kind of tired of looking at this exterior. He does have the Gladiator lug nut, so if you're ever losing in a street race, you press that uh, button that he has hidden somewhere inside the cockpit, and they will shoot out and flatten your opponent's tires. Oh, there we go, underneath the hood. That's how you add horsepower. Pool noodles. You just get purple and red pool noodles, and you just slap them on every wire and every hose underneath the hood, and you're perfect, okay? We got a cold air intake, and that's about it. Where's the turbo? I feel like there should be a turbo somewhere that I'm missing, but it's probably hidden away. You know how factory cars are. Interior looks fucking hideous. You got a bunch of weird different colors inside. We got like this weird rainbow color steering wheel with the white handle, I guess. I don't know what you would call it. The white grip. And then you got red everywhere and you got like a sticker bomb boot. Like you look very confused on the interior. Your seats don't even match. I don't know if you guys know that, but his seats don't even match. Drew Peacock got them good ass eyes. And then he has dinosaurs, it looks like, in his damn armrest or in his damn door panel those look like dinosaurs the back seats they don't get anything special they do get the dinosaur print but that's it what's with the dinosaurs i've never once seen dinosaur print anything and i never want to see it again please never never again yeah for twelve thousand dollars i was expecting a little bit more i uh, i don't know what these things usually go for because i've never been uh, one to look at dodge neons but based on this kelly blue book value right here it looks like you're about a thousand over market and based on all the bullshit you put on it, I would still mark it down another like 4000 on top of that. Because nobody wants to be seen driving this hunk of shit. Next car, Nissan 350Z. $19,000. I hope there's a good reason why. I found the reason why. It's a GTR. It ain't a 350Z. It's actually a GTR in disguise. We have the carbon fiber hood. The GTR front fascia. Smack dab right there. The rear end does look nice. I feel like I've seen this rear end before, and it's it's not a bad rear end. Like, if you're going for an upgrade, this looks like a pretty sick rear end. I could actually fuck with this rear end. Just, the problem is the GTR front end. That doesn't belong on your 350Z, buckaroo. I feel like you gotta remove that pronto. Like I said, rear end, cool. Front end, no. Get that out of there. Like, I feel like it's one thing to put, like, a GT500 front fascia on your car, as long as you're not badging it as a GT500, but putting a GTR, like, not even the same car, but putting a GTR front fascia on your car, it's like, why? It's like putting a Camaro front fascia on a uh, Silverado. It just, it doesn't work. He does have very low miles. I will give him props on that. 25,000 miles, that is very low. Honestly, for his price, it's probably not. I had no idea this thing had Lambo doors when I picked it. This is honestly a surprise to me. 
Yeah. Remember what I said about this price probably isn't that bad? <laughs> well, do I have a little explanation for you? Yeah, if you want to be the guy driving around in the fake GTR with Lambo doors on it, go ahead. Go right ahead. I know some people really love Lambo doors, and, and you know what? More power to you. You could love what you want, but I'm not going to be that guy. I am not going to be that guy. If my car ain't an exotic and it didn't come with Lambo doors, I'm not putting Lambo doors on it. I ain't doing it. Uh, carbon fiber hood and the rear bumper look legit, and I feel like this car is salvageable. I'm sure you could save it, but I just, I, I don't know, $20,000 for that? I don't know. I feel like you could do better. Let's read his description. New high-efficient radiator. Okay. New headers down to full MagnaFlow exhaust system. Nice. Okay, that's pretty cool. Plenum spacer. Okay, high-flow intake manifold. Okay, not sure how you managed to do that. Cold air intake system. Okay, I could see that. Mod chipped. Yep, you ain't got shit. Really should get Dino Run and professionally adjusted with their computers to get full feel out of these parts. Well, why don't you do it, Buckaroo? Why don't you do it with for your twenty thousand dollar car? I don't want my car to lug and jerk and feel like dog shit. I want I want it to feel like a smooth power machine. I can only imagine how this thing drives with with what he just listed and and with that being the message at the end. I don't think so. Looking to sell this to someone who would actually drive this. It's a shame just not driving. I wonder. I wonder why he doesn't drive it. I'm sure he's got enough of those. Is that a GT? Never mind. I'm sure he's heard enough of that, and that's why he ain't driving it. Next car, we have a 2002 Chrysler PT Cruiser Limited Sport Wagon. Four-door. Limited Sport Wagon. This is this right here looks like a sport wagon if I've ever seen one. Look at that. Dual air scoops. Smack dab right there on the hood. I've never seen an aggressive PT Cruiser. I've seen the PT Cruisers with like the flames painted on them, but never one with a body kit like this. He went straight from badass PT Cruiser to showing you his backup cam. Oh, there we go. Limited. Sla I've never seen that. That that ain't stock. I promise you that ain't stock. Is that a Supra wing? <laughs> As you can see, Chrysler stole the, the Supra styling right there with that nice curvy wing. It's obviously not a Supra wing, guys. I know there's going to be some 12-year-olds. Drew, you, you should know that ain't a Supra wing. I know, it's a joke. Like I like how the PT Cruiser goes from being bone stock in the rear to kind of friggin' ugly on the sides to just a freak of nature up front. Like this side profile is just disgusting. It's absolutely horrendous. The interior, what a chill looking Uber. My mom used to have a PT Cruiser and it was a really cozy car. It was a turbo model, I will have you know. So it was actually pretty fun. Compared to my V6 Mustang, it was it was pretty quick. And this guy has Lambo doors on it. Okay, all right, that's enough of Lambo doors for the day. Again, another car that I didn't look at thoroughly to see if it had Lambo doors. This one's got it. 2.4 liter. This might be the turbo model. I'm, this might be the turbo model. I'm not sure. Hers was not a... Was it manual? No, hers was not manual. But uh, yeah, it was actually a pretty fun little car. Now, I don't recommend buying one because to just change the freaking battery, you got to pull off a damn wheel. What kind of engineering is that, Chrysler? Stupid. I just want to pop the hood or pop the trunk and it should be right there. I, I shouldn't have to check the battery voltage by removing a wheel and jacking up the car. It's, it shouldn't be like that. That's that's bad engineering right there. Bad Chrysler. Bad. That's why you're a failing company. Imagine if Chrysler released this today with like a Hellcat package. Now that would be freaking awesome. I feel like people would actually just, just cop those left and right because you'd have a tiny like crossover style car with 707 horsepower i feel like that'd be a, a, a big hit you know come on chrysler we could we can make a deal really quick i could i could help bring you guys back to your glory days yeah 3300 honestly it's probably not that bad of a price 130,000 miles though on a chrysler nah you know to take a gamble i guess anyway guys that's gonna do it for this video we looked at a lot of uh builds let me know which one you guys thought was the worst. The Honda Civic one, the only reason why I think that was one of the worsts was because that guy was, like, straight up serious. But, I mean, as a show car, it's not really that bad. I just, I feel like he missed out on a couple performance mods that would have made it just the full package. It would have been so sick to see, like, a turbo or something, at least underneath the hood. But whatever. Anyways, let me know which one you thought was the worst down in the comments down below. Subscribe to see more videos like this one. And until next video, peace.